Hello, this is Mrs. Crib. We are going to go over the questions. Well, actually, I'm going to explain all the questions from the um, Chapter 13 review from Kia, which was open note and everything. This was just homework assignment, but I want to make sure you're understanding everything that was there. Let me erase that random little thing. So first, first question, look at the graph. Does it depict an endothermic or exothermic reaction? So remember, um, when you're doing a reaction, you start off with reactants. It goes reactants goes to products. So this is the reactant side and this is the product side. And this is where the energy is. And you can see that the energy of the products is higher. So the delta H is calculated as the um, heat of the products minus the heat of the reactants. And so delta H here is positive because the products are higher. So this is an endothermic reaction because we have more energy in the products than we do in the reactants. The delta H here would be a positive value. If this was like a four and this was a two, because you know that may be a zero, maybe that's three, then it would be four minus two is a two, a positive two, positive two joules or kilojoules or whatever. All right, the next one, look at the graph and at which point on the graph would you need to look at a chart to obtain the heat of fusion, the, del the heat of fusion is delta H of fusion. And the delta H of fusion is when you're melting something, okay? Or if that's going this way when you're adding heat. And then and you could be freezing it if you're losing heat. Um, so it's going to be one of the flat areas right here. It's either this one or this one. Because you have the delta heat of fusion and the delta heat of vaporization, this is where the delta heat of fusion would be used right here, we're melting it. So like, for instance, I would, could start off, this is zero degrees, so zero degrees Celsius ice, and then I add this amount of energy, whatever this amount of energy is right here, to get to this side, and then I'd have zero degrees Celsius water. So you use the delta H of fusion on one of the latent lazy areas, and that's it. That's where you, you'd use it. And I'm gonna show you your notes as I go through this. This is, um, showing you, like I pulled up the notes. First of all, I want, when I asked for a, a definition, I want it directly as stated in the notes. So heat was the total amount of thermal energy transferred from one object to another. Some people miss that because they tried to do other things with it. Um, make sure you're using the, the values or the definitions in your notes. Latent lazy heat are these ones, the flat ones. So this is where you can find that graph as well. Then it says the molar enthalpy of fusion or the delta H of fusion or the heat of fusion. Those are the same thing. And so that's what that's how it's defined, again, in your notes. And then the vaporization. These should have already been filled in, but I'm just going to kind of refer to them, showing you where all this stuff is in your notes. Okay, so let's go back to here. Um, look at the graph. So I guess it would have been number two. Um, look at the graph. Which formula would you use for... Um, point one. So we're talking about here and this area, there's the one. And so when we're doing going from here to here, well this is anytime that's a sloped area for every single one you're going to use Q equals MC delta T because we're always changing the temperature. Notice that this is the temperature over here. So the temperature went from like see this is 50 so that's maybe like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 went from a negative 10 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. The temperature is changing so if you notice the temperature going up and down you need to use this one. Okay Q equals MC delta T. I'd use Q equals MC delta T here. I would use Q equals MC delta T here. Remember Q is heat. Heat energy or the change in the energy in joules. So that answer would have been Q equals MC delta T. Number four, which formula to use at point two? Well, point two is where the delta heat of fusion was used because we're melting. So you're going to use, let's look at the options. You can use that the Q, which is the heat, is the, the moles that you have times the delta heat of fusion. So it's moles times delta H of fusion. So if I have, um, uh, well, we'll I think we'll, cop, we'll do some calculating a little bit further along. So that's where you use the delta H of fusion. So that's that particular formula. Which formula would you use at point three? Well, I just told you that one. All the horizontal, not sorry, all the ones with slope, you use Q equals MC delta T. So that would have been this one. 
which formula do you use with 0.4 on this graph? Well, now we're, what we have here, from here to here, we are warming a liquid. So, well, not a lig, a liquid. So right here, if you go across, you can see the temperature. This is a 100 degree Celsius liquid. But over here, it's still the same temperature, but it's a 100 degrees Celsius water vapor or steam. So what happens between here and here? It turns into a vapor. So we're vaporizing it. So you use the delta H of vaporization, VAP for vaporization. So that's what you would use in that. So which formula then would have that? Well, the moles of the quant, which is the quantity times the heat of vaporization or moles times the delta H of vaporization. And I'm gonna look at your reference sheet for a moment. So I'm gonna pull that up. This is the reference sheet. You should be able to get it. it. This is the one I want you to use. Notice there it is, moles times the delta H of fusion, moles times the delta H of vaporization. Since this is going to be, um, this, if you're in 2020, this is an open, note, open book test, you could write on this. If you're not in 2020, um, you would not be able to write on this. But here are the delta H's of vaporization of different liquids. Water, um, ethanol, methanol, and ammonia. And, and they give you the formulas right here to help you recognize them. So this is how much energy it takes to turn all of these things into a vapor or get steam. And this is the fusion, which ones it takes it turn from a solid to a liquid. So all of these. So they're all here. Okay, so make sure you pay really close attention to this particular reference sheet. Let's go back. Um, you have to add energy to a system to break molecules. True or, or false? Yes, true. You always have to add energy to a system to break things apart. Think about Red Rover, people holding hands. The only way to break those hands apart in the game is to add energy in and, and push them apart. You always add energy to break them apart. If a reaction is endothermic, the change in the heat, the delta H, will be negative, all right? Well, if a reaction is endothermic, what happened? There we go. There we go. Oh, goodness. A reaction is endothermic. That means we're starting off with, remember we go from reactants to products. So endo, endothermic, the heat goes in. So it's going to go up. This is the Q over here, the heat in joules. So then this is the, where you calculate delta H. So how do you calculate delta H? It's the heat of the products minus the heat of the reactants. So if it's endothermic, the products are higher than the reactants. So maybe I'll give it a value of a two and this one a value of a one, and that's zero. Well then two minus one is still a positive one. So in an endothermic reaction, you always have a positive value. So if the reaction is endothermic, the change in the heat, the delta H, will be negative, that would be false. If you have an endothermic reaction, then the heat loss will be written in the reaction um, on the product side of the reaction. Okay, if I have A plus B yields C plus D, all right, and then I have an exothermic reaction. Well, an exothermic reaction, the delta H is a negative value, like negative 20 joules, let's say. All right, in an exothermic reaction, the heat is exiting, so it's gonna be being produced, made or produced, so it's always gonna be written on the product side. So you would take the negative 20 and write it as a positive 20 joules. This negative sign just means write it on the product side. If it had a positive sign, you would write it on the reactant side. So um, if you have an exothermic reaction, then the heat loss will be written in the reaction on the product side. That would be true. Number 10. Match each side carefully. Now, guys, all you have to do um, is you need to pay attention to the to the um, definitions in your notes, and this is also in Quizlet. So what is the molar heat of vaporization? So I'm looking with something about gases. The amount of heat added to melt a solid, well, that's not it. The total amount of energy transferred, where the temperature of a system increases on a warming curve. The amount of heat added to turn a liquid to a gas, there we go, we're turning it to a gas, D. Molar heat of fusion. Okay, fusion, that's where we're melting. Okay, the amount of heat added to melt a solid. This is not used. Oh, we gotta work on that one later. Specific heat. 
Okay, the amount of energy that raises the temperature of one gram of something one degree Celsius. Now, let's look at your notes before I continue. Um, look at these things. Um, there's sensible heat, latent heat, fusion, specific heat. The amount of energy that raises one gram of something by one degree Celsius is specific heat. See, the definitions are right here in your notes. Okay, sensible heat, the amount of heat given off by combustion. Well, that word has, that, mm, that has the word combustion in it. So let's, do I have anything with combustion down there? I don't see anything. Hmm. The average kinetic energy of the particles. What's an average kinetic energy of something? Well, I'm going to go back to your notes. Let's find the average kinetic energy. Let's see. This is the temperature. There it is, the average kinetic energy. So it has to be temperature. So temperature, this is an I. Okay. All right. Latent heat, the amount, the heat content of a system. No. Nope. The total energy transferred. The total energy transferred. Well, that is heat, A. Now let's double check that. Let's look at our notes. Heat, the total amount of thermal energy transferred. There it is. Okay, so we've used that one. Where the temperature of a system increases on the warming curve. So on the warming curve, you know, it increases, then it's flat, then it increases, then it's flat. So we're talking about the increase areas. So what kind of heat is that? Well, that increasing area is sensible heat because you can detect the temperature change, like it went to zero to, to 10 degrees and then 10 to 100 degrees. The heat's going up. You could detect it with your thermometer. So this is going to be sensible heat. Okay. Where the phase change happens and there's no temperature change. We'll look at this graph again. Right in these areas, the temperature change does not happen. It stays the same. If it was 100 degrees, it stays 100 degrees on both sides. So phase changes happen at latent lazy heat areas. So that will be E. E is latent heat. And that that's here, E. Now is latent heat in your notes? Let's just double check. The process produces a phase change. Look at that. Flat on the graph. No temperature change. Everything's in your notes, guys. All right, so now we have two left. The amount of heat given off by combustion and the heat content of a system. Well, combustion is not in enthalpy. Um, this is just the general heat content of a system is H for enthalpy. So the one we did not use was G. So those are the answers for the um, multiple, not the multiple choice, the matching. All right, move on. Um, object A heats up faster than object B. Which one has a higher specific heat value? Now this is where you have to think about it, okay? The higher the specific heat, the longer it takes to heat it up. The higher the specific heat, the more energy you need to heat it up or the more energy you need to let go of to cool it off. High specific heat is slow to heat up, slow to cool down, okay? So if object A heats up faster than object B. So which one has a higher specific heat? object B because object A has a low specific heat so what that means is oh, sorry about that okay we're back so I drew two little graphs this is the object A if it has a low specific heat object A heats up faster now look how much faster it went up then see this is the temperature maybe this is 25 degrees Celsius and that's zero and maybe this is 25 degrees, so that's zero. Well, this is degrees Celsius on this side, okay? So if it has a, a low specific heat, this is how you can tell a small amount of energy and then the temperature went way up really fast. Okay, this one has a lot of energy, all this energy before the temperature goes up. So it takes a long time. So this has a high specific heat. This would be the high specific heat specific heat and so it takes a long time to heat up and a long time to cool down low specific heat short time to heat up short time to cool down all right what is the heat of formation for lead okay lead is an element and anything that's an element you don't have to heat um, form it's already there so it's gonna have to be zero I don't even have to look it up all pure elements have a formation, heat of formation of zero. Um, even if there's more than one, so like O2, that heat of formation is still zero because this 
is just an element, okay? Um, sulfur, I think sulfur and phosphorus, don't worry about those. They're just elements. The heat of formation is zero. All right, if the heat of a reaction going from reactants to products is a positive 89 kilojoules, what is the heat of the reverse reaction? So if we go to reactants to products and the delta H is equal to 89 kilojoules, remember, um, if we go, the delta H is equal to the products minus the reactants. So in this case, to get a positive 89, the um, product would have been higher than the reactant. Well, if I'm going to go the opposite direction, then the delta H would have to be a negative 89 kilojoules. Think about that. So to go to forward reaction, this is called forward from left to right, just like you read. If the heat of the reaction, the change in the reaction, um, it, we increase the reaction by 89 kilojoules, then going the opposite way, we'd have to let go of the exact same amount. So it would be a negative 89 kilojoules. What is the standard state temperature? Well, standard temperature, this is different than STP. We're not talking about standard temperature and pressure. We're talking about the standard state. Okay, the standard state is the temperature range where you actually um, do stuff, you know, like, so it's a 25 degrees Celsius. We're talking about the temperature where, um, when you're in a lab or something, you're not gonna work in a lab at zero degrees Celsius. So we're talking about working in a lab at room temperature, kind of. A right, piece of metal weighs 35 grams and absorbs 185 joules of heat at a temperature increase from, so this would be my initial temperature, to, that would be my final temperature. What is the specific heat, the C, of this metal? All right, that's already, you can see right there. Remember C, some people said that this was the degrees Celsius in an Ed Puzzle earlier. No, in this case, this C is the specific heat. It's not degrees Celsius. So I'm going to calculate it, and I've been given the heat, which is a Q value. So Q equals MC delta T. This is the mass, and that's your M. Okay? So I'm going to put this in. Q is 185 joules, and the mass is 35 grams. I'm calculating the C, and then delta T. I'm, I can, I'm going to write it here, but or you can write it separately. Like delta T is uh, T final minus T initial. I guess I changed my mind. I'm going to do it over here now. So T final is 63 degrees C. T initial is 22 degrees C. How do I know? Initial is the first one and final is the second one. I'm going from 22 to 63. That's the beginning and that's the end. The final one is 63. So when I subtract those two, I get 41 degrees Celsius. The sig figs are correct because this ends in the ones place, ones place, and ones place. So 41 degrees Celsius is my delta T. And now I'm going to solve for C. So I just got to divide both sides by 35 grams and both sides by 41 degrees Celsius. This cancels and that cancels. So my specific heat then is going to just be 185 divided by 35 and divide again by 41 and I get a 0 0.129 and I need to look and then it's um, the unit is joules per gram degree Celsius but let's look at sig figs there are three sig figs here but there are only two here and two here so I need two leading zeros are losers one two the nine causes the two to round up 0 0.13 unit joules over grams and also over degrees Celsius. So 0.13 joules per gram degrees Celsius, the first answer. How much energy is absorbed when 99 grams of water is heated from T initial to T final, 49 degrees Celsius? So Q equals MC delta T again. I'm asking for heat energy, which is the Q. The mass is 99.0 grams. I'm going to skip this for a second because we're going to look it up. The um, final temperature, so let's, this is what needs to go here, T final. So let's calculate it. T final, T, um, delta T rather, is T final minus T initial, which is 49 minus 4.0. And I get 45. And I have to end in the uh, ones place because... 
That ends in the ones place, so this is going to be fine, 45. So that's going to be my delta T, 45 degrees Celsius. Okay, what about my C for water? Okay, we're going from 4 degrees Celsius to 49, which is between uh, the, the um, freezing point and the boiling point. So this is liquid water. You got to think about that. It's between 0 and 100, so it's liquid. So now we got to look at our, our uh, sheet for the liquid water specific heat value. So let's see. Uh, here it is. Okay, liquid water specific heat, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Um, if you use 4.18, I would be okay with that because it is in two places. I really prefer these up here, but this was just a chart I needed because we needed the specific heat of other compounds and it happened to list water. So 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And now we're going to solve. Grams cancel, numerator and denominator. Celsius cancels, denominator, numerator. Joules is my only unit that's left. And then I'm going to double check my math real quick. All right, I put it in my calculator. I got 18639.72. Check significant figures. This one has three sig figs. This one you don't count sig figs for because I got it off the chart. This one has two sig figs, so I need two sig figs. One, two. This six causes the eight to round up. So be careful, that's going to be a one, nine, and then I have to have a zero for all the other things. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. No decimal point. With a decimal point, that's too many significant figures. I needed two. So 1900 and the unit is joules, so 1900 joules, it's that one. And the reason all these others here, you'll notice them, um, like look, that's the one with the wrong, with no sig figs, you gotta check sig figs. Calculate the delta H or the change in the heat for the following reaction. You will need to look at your reference chart for this, okay? So I'm gonna write this one out carefully for you, make sure that we have it all there. Um, First thing we need to do is, we're talking about the change in the heat, so we need to find the delta H of formation for all the compounds. Okay, so I'm gonna go look them up. So NaOH solid, so let's go to my reference sheet. Not that one. Okay, NaOH solid, so this is where I scroll down. There's my heat of formation. So I gotta find sodium hydroxide solid, there it is, if it's in that, question, it is on this chart. So these are the heats of formation. There's sodium hydroxide. It's negative 425.609. Okay. So back to that. So this one is negative 425.609 kilojoules per mole, because that's the unit that's on the chart. All right. The next one, hydrochloride gas. So go back to that reference sheet. HCl, HCl, gas. There, there's HCl gas. It's negative 92.307. Now I want you to look here. There's water liquid, negative 285. There's water gas, negative 241. Be careful. Make sure you get the right ones. All right, I'm not going to go back. Oh, let's look at NaCl because that's another one we need. There's NaCl solid negative 411.153, and then water gas. Make sure you get gas, negative 241. So you see all the values are right here on this chart. I'm gonna go ahead and write them in over here now. For HCl, it was a negative 92.307 kilojoules per mole. For NaCl solid, it's a negative, that was for HCl, um, 411.153. 153 kilojoules per mole. For water gas, it's a negative 241.818 kilojoules per mole. All right, now how do I do this? Well, delta H is going to always be the sum of the heat of the products minus the sum of the heat of the reactants. Now that's my abbreviated way of writing the formula. If you look at your reference sheet, there it is. The heat of the reaction is the sum, that's the summation sign, of the heat of the products minus the summation sign 
of the heat of the reactants. It's a simple formula, really. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. So now let's do products. Now, what do we have to remember? This is the product side. So we're going to do products first. All right, so I have only one mole here. So it's going to be, I'm going to put a bracket, one mole times negative 411.153 kilojoules per mole plus one mole of water, gas, one mole times negative 241.818 kilojoules per mole. All right, that's the product side. And then we're going to subtract out the reactant side. And so this is the reactant side. And so I have one mole of each of those. One mole of sodium hydroxide times a negative 425.609 kilojoules per mole plus one mole of hydrogen chloride one mole times a negative 92.307 kilojoules per mole. So that's the reactant side. So now I've got it set up, I just have to solve it. Um, don't forget to cancel out your units. So moles and moles cancel all the way across. That's why we had to write how many moles we had, because not every equation, like look, this one has two moles there. And now we're going to add the, the products up. And so when it, this the products on this side minus the reactants on this side. So when I add up the products, let's see, I end up with negative 652.971 kilojoules. And then I got to add up the reactants and I end up with so subtracting it, I, I see I'm subtracting, it's because it's products minus reactants, okay? Get that. So this is the products right here, products minus, now we're gonna do the reactants. So what's the reactant? Um, a negative 135.055 kilojoules. So you subtract a negative, you're going to end up adding a positive. Oh, sorry, I wrote the wrong number there. That's the answer. Um, negative 517.916. So it's negative 652 minus a negative 517. That gives you negative 135.055 kilojoules. So this one. Okay, all right, please be careful with these questions. Do it piece by piece. Next one. Oops, I don't know what I just did. Let's pull it back up. There we go. All right, here we are. Calculate the change in the enthalpy, which is what we just did. The change in the enthalpy is the heat of the reaction, the delta H, for this new reaction. All right, I'm not going to go back to the reference sheet. I'm going to pause it and put all the values right underneath here for you. All right. I went to the reference sheet. I got these values directly off the sheet. Now this is not per two, this is per one. We're gonna use, we account for the two when we do the math. Okay, the delta H is still the sum of the heat of the products minus the sum of the heat of the reactants. This is the product side. This is the reactant side. So we do products first. So it's going to be now, notice this time we have two moles. This is the number of moles in the balanced equation. We have two moles of CO2 times a negative 393.509 kilojoules per mole. And that's the entire product side. I don't have to do anything else. Okay, and now I'm going to subtract because, you know, you subtract out the reactant side. So this is the product side. Now I'm going to try, subtract out the reactant side. Okay, and so this is where we're going to have to add it because I have we have two moles of CO2 right there, but we have to multiply it by the number the heat of formation, negative 110.525 kilojoules per mole. Now this is zero, so I'm not going to I can put it in there. We have one 
mole times zero kilojoules per mole. Now, why is it zero? Because oxygen is an element. All right, so that's the product side minus reactant side. So this ends up being a two times this, the moles cancel. Moles and moles cancel. Moles and moles cancel. This completely goes away because we're multiplying by zero. So this is two times a negative um, 393 to get a negative 565.968 kilojoules. And then we're going to subtract whatever was in the second bracket, a negative 221.05 kilojoules. Okay, subtract a negative. What do I end up as my final answer? Oh goodness, I did it again. I looked at the answer. This one was a negative 787.018. Um, I'm looking at my key and I just glanced down at the wrong spot. Um, so that minus that, I end up with the negative 565.968 kilojoules. Not this one right here. Okay. All right. Now this one is the long question. So I'm probably going to need to um, pull up another piece of paper to work this one. So let's just hold on on this one. I gave you a lot of clues about this one because it's a complex thermodynamic question. It has a lots of pieces. This is going to have many, many points, probably a nine point question on the test. So I'll pull this up in a few minutes and do this one. We'll skip it for the for a moment. Number 20, calculate the heat of the reaction here. Um, now again, you just go look all these values up off the chart. Zero kilojoules for this one, negative 74.81 kilojoules per mole for this one. You get all of these off the same reference chart. Make sure you're looking at the states of matter. It's a gas. These things matter this time. Negative 393.509 kilojoules per mole. And for liquid water this time, negative 285.830 kilojoules per mole. To delta, so again, delta H of the reaction is equal to the sum of the heat of the products minus the sum of the heat of the reactants. Products. Okay, so when I put these products in, I get one mole, because there's only one mole here, times negative 393.509 kilojoules per mole plus, there's two moles here, two moles times a negative 285.830 kilojoules per mole. That's products minus the sum of the heat of the reactants. These are the reactants. And I don't have to worry about that one because it's just a zero. So it's one mole because there's only one mole of methane times a negative 74 0.81 kilojoules per mole. I know I'm writing fast. I'm trying to speed this process up. When you um, cancel out these units, and then you multiply these two together and then add it to that, we end up with negative 965.169 kilojoules. And then we're going to subtract out. That's what this is. the other part. So this is the product side. Subtract out the reactant side. And the reactants are negative 74.81 kilojoules. And we end up with a negative 890.359 kilojoules. Now, look at your, look at Look at here. Yeah, this is um one where you might need to uh, figure out what the best answer was, which one came the closest. And so not those, not those. It's not positive. It had to be that one. And the only reason that might be like that is if 
the values that you get from the charts are slightly different than the values that were used to, to generate these answers. So you're going to look for the closest one in that case. Okay. Look at your reference sheet and choose a substance that will heat up with less energy. That means it's going to have a low specific heat or the quickest. So you're comparing the specific heat values of, uh, of uh, aluminum, copper, gold, sodium chloride, ice, and mercury. So if I go back to my reference sheet, there it is. And that's why we have them all here. Aluminum, so I'm looking for the smallest one. So aluminum, ice is 2.03, that's high. Aluminum's 0 0.9. Um, gold, 0 0.129. Ice is 2.03. Uh, what was the other ones? It's hard to, this is hard to, to figure out. Uh, so we know that it's not ice and we know that it's not I think it's probably gold so is it mercury aluminum gold aluminum copper or gold let's look at those again uh, aluminum 0.9 copper 0.35 that's lower than aluminum gold 0.129 so 0.129 is the lowest one I found so far so it's not aluminum or copper Sodium chloride or mercury, let's check those out. Sodium chloride is 0.86, mercury is Hg, 0.14, so gold, is it's definitely gold, Au. So Au had a 0 0.129, which was the lowest, and if it's the lowest, it will heat up the fastest and cool down the fastest, okay? If it's quick to heat up, it's quick to cool down. Look at your reference sheet and choose the substance that will cool down the slowest. So now I'm looking for the biggest um, specific heat value. Okay. All right. Well, we know it's not gold because it was fast. So now we've got to look and see aluminum, copper, sodium chloride, ice, and mercury again. Aluminum, uh, sodium chloride is 0.86, aluminum is 0.9, so 0.9. Let's see, water is really high. Ice is 2. Mercury is 0.1. So I think it's ice because water is not on there. Ice is 2. Let's look at it, look and see again. Um, ice is bigger than those, the sodium chloride, ice, and mercury. Ice is 2. Sodium chloride is 0.8. Mercury is 0.14. The biggest one on this chart here is ice and water, so it's ice. Ice is the correct answer on that one. All right, that's all of those. Now I've got to do this complicated question. And I'm going to do it down here in this space because it's going to require a lot. So we're going to calculate the amount of energy it would take to turn 6.5 grams of ice at negative 5 to steam at 110. I'm going to, first, I'm going to draw the chart. And I'm going to draw it here. And this is important because it'll help me to figure out all the cues. So we're starting off with ice, and then we're going to go, ice warms up to zero degrees Celsius, then that's when it starts to melt. The next time it gets an important temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, where it starts to boil. All right, we're going to start off this ice in this equation is um, negative 5 degrees Celsius, and it's going to get up to steam at 110. So we're starting off at negative 5 degrees Celsius. This is where we're beginning. And we're going to go all the way up here to 110 degrees Celsius. So we're going to have multiple Qs. So this is where we're going to calculate Q1. That's the sensible heat. So Q1 is going to be Q equals mc delta T. All right, the mass of my ice on this question, I think, was, let me double check it. The mass of my ice, 6.5 grams. Okay, let me turn in my key so I can make sure I write this all down. So 6.5 grams, because that's what the M stands for. M is 6.5 grams. Now I need the specific heat of ice. I don't need it of water, so I go and look at my reference sheet their specific heat of ice, 2.05. Do you see that? Right there, there's the ice, there's the liquid water, and there's the steam. I'm not gonna pull this back up because this is where they all come from. 
So the specific heat of ice is 2.05 joules per gram degree Celsius. The change in the temperature, the first change in the temperature is going to, we're going to go from negative 5 to 1, I mean to 0. That's the first temperature change. So T final minus T initial, in this case is negative 5 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. Okay? When I subtract negative 5 minus 0, I just get, no, the final, that's wrong. The final temp, no, that's, that's correct. No, 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 I got it backwards. The final temperature is 0. I just realized I wrote it backwards here. It's correct on my key. Sorry about that. Let's fix that real quick. The final temperature, there's my final temperature, T final. So the T final is 0 degrees Celsius minus a negative 5 degrees Celsius. Subtract a negative, we end up with a positive degree Celsius. You're, the temperature is increasing. All right, I multiply this up through, and I get my first answer of 66.6, .6, but I have to look at significant figures. There's only two sig figs here. <coughs> Excuse me. And this first temperature, I wrote it as negative 5. Is it negative 5.0? Yes, negative 5.0. So... It has to have two significant figures there. So this is really negative 5.0 degrees. So this is a 0 0.0 degrees because this is from a chart. Well, I guess it's not from a chart, but it's 0, 0.0. So it ends up being two sig figs. So 67 joules is my first Q, Q1. All right, now we're going to do Q2. That's going to be in this area. And in Q2... We're not heating it up, we're melting it. So we're gonna need the delta H of fusion. So we use the, the formula, the moles is equal times the delta H of fusion. Well, I don't have the moles, I have the mass. You have to remember to turn mass to moles. So 6.5 grams of water, what's the molar mass of water? One mole, and so water is H2O, so two times 1.01. .01. Oxygen is 1 times 16. Add that together, we get 18.02 grams per mole. you got to multiply 2 times this to equal 2.02 .02 first. All right, so I'm going to turn my mass to moles. And when I turn my mass to moles, um, I get 0 0.36 moles. All right, so that's what I got to use there. So, but you're going to get to use it a lot of times because this is moles. Moles is M-O-L. So 0 0.36 moles times the delta H, H of fusion. I'll go back to the reference sheet for that one. And I keep hitting the wrong thing. There it is. Delta H of fusion for water. There's water. I need the delta H of fusion right here. 6.01. There's the delta H of vaporization. I'm not going to go back to the chart for that because that's where the two values are. So delta H of fusion is uh, 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Moles cancel. So this value is 2.16. I need two sig figs. So 2.2 kilojoules. That's Q2. All right, now we're going to do Q3. And again, we're going to use Q equals MC delta D, T because we're changing temperature. And the mass is still 6.5, but now we need the specific heat because now it's a liquid. This is where it's a liquid. We need the specific heat of the liquid water, which is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. You get it back off of that chart and the temperature change. Now this is the T final and this is the T initial. So the final temperature is 100 degrees Celsius and the initial temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So that's just a, um, the, the temperature change is 100 degrees Celsius. And then um, we're gonna use, because, because this is the thing that has a measured value, we'll use that for our sig figs. Then we cancel everything out. And my new value, when I multiply these, is 2719.6 which is two significant figures, is 2,700 joules, because joules is not canceled. All right, then we're going to do Q4, which is here. Now we have 
we're not melting it anymore. We're turning it into vapor. So we need vaporization. So Q4 equals the moles times the delta H of vaporization. The moles we already calculated is 0.36 moles. The delta H of vaporization, I showed you where that was on the chart, and that is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Cancel out my units, and it's gonna end up being 14.65 kilojoules, two significant figures, because that has two sig figs, which is 15 kilojoules. And then we're gonna have my last Q, which I'll do a different color. This is Q5. In Q5, we're using Q equals MC delta T again because it's on the slope and we're changing the temperature. The mass is still 6.5 grams, but now I need the specific heat because here it's now a gas. So I need the specific heat of the vapor or the steam. And um, so that was 2.01 joules per gram degree Celsius. And this now is my T final, and this is my T initial. So it's gonna be 110 minus 100 this time, which ends up being 100, I mean, sorry, which ends up being 10 degrees Celsius. You cancel everything out, sorry, uh, grams, grams, Celsius, Celsius, and we get 130.65 with two sig figs, it's 130 joules because joules is what did not cancel. So that's all the heat. Now the final answer though, we just gotta add them all together. So the total is gonna to be all these Q's added together, all of them. So it's gonna be 67 joules plus um, 22, 22.2 rather kilojoules plus 2,700 joules plus 15 kilojoules plus 130 joules. Well, I can't add it all together because we have some that are in kilojoules. So convert kilojoules to joules. So 2.2 kilojoules. You've got to remember there are 1,000 joules in one kilojoule. So just multiply by 1,000. So this becomes 2,200 joules. And this 15 kilojoules becomes 15 thousand joules because I'm converting it. Now we add it all together for the final answer, 20097. How many significant figures do I need? Well, we got to look at the one with the least significant and the one that's least significant. Well, this one goes to the tenths place, but that one only goes to the thousandths place. So we have to go to the thousandths place. So it's going to be 20000 um, joules. And, um, or you could say 20 dot kilojoules so that we have the right number of significant figures. And that's a lot of work, isn't it? That's a whole lot of points. Please write that down so that you can refer to it. So where would you do up here? Well, the one up here that I did, I said for, look for the one that matches the best. And so in that case, it's going to be this one. Okay. All right. I hope that helps. Please be careful with all this. I'll see you soon.